Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So in front of us we have the 2024 BMW X7 M60i finished off in black sapphire metallic. The MSRP for this model is $121,000. We have a lot of options for this particular BMW. This is also the highest trim level that you can get for the X7. So powering this M version is a four liter twin turbo V8. This is paired to the eight speed automatic transmission and it pumps out 523 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque. That power sent through the X-Drive all-wheel drive system, propelling this 5,900-pound SUV from zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. When properly equipped, top speed is 155. Fuel economy is also right around 16 miles per gallon in the city and 21 out on the highway. Now, as we work our way to the exterior styling, first thing that I'll talk about is the new headlight design. They started this in 2023 with the split design, LED turn signals and DRLs, headlights and high beams in the lower section. I think it's a pretty cool integrated design, very sleek with the size of those housings too. Now we still have that massive kidney grill, forward facing camera. We do have the area there that will open up to provide even more cooling for the engine. So when you start it up, those will open up. All the sensors are in the lower section as well as some large inlets in both sections and then all the cutouts down below to really give this a lot more cooling. There's also some very thin ones just underneath the headlights, which is nice to see, and some lines that run down both sides of the hood there. Now this also has a set of 22 inch wheels. They're nine and a half wide up front, 10 and a half in the rear. Solid design to them with that multi-spoke pattern. M Sport brakes are just behind that. Everything is blacked out for this model. All the window trim, roof racks, power folding side mirrors, which also have the turn signal and a camera. This has the full moon roof up top, even a functional piece just behind that front tire. And then some very nice lines that run just underneath the door handle in the lower section too, even some nice fender arches. And then in back, this has the body colored spoiler, third brake light, wiper blade, dark housings for those LED taillights, which is nice to see. Backup camera sensors, even some gray trim in that lower diffuser section just to break it up. And that quad tip dual exhaust. Now it's not very loud when you do the remote start, but you can do that just by triple tapping the lock button and then it just fired up. Again, gonna be hard to hear, but you can definitely hear it under acceleration. And then you can use that button to shut it off as needed. I also wanna point out, I currently have this vehicle in its highest ground clearance setting. So that gives you a lot of space. You can lower this, of course, if you wanna make it easier to enter and exit. And then you can use the button on the key fob or the one up underneath to open up the power lift gate. Now the X5 and the X7 have this split design. So the upper one will open up and then you do have to go in and lower the lower one there individually. This button here will also lower the rear end of the vehicle. So if you have it in the highest setting right now, it will go all the way to the lowest setting, give you a lower load height to get in items in and out. Now this is a three row vehicle. Third row is currently up. You have a little bit of storage, but what's impressive is the amount of storage underneath. You could probably fit a spare tire here if you wanted to, but you can put a lot of items down below. You can also fold all of these seats by using these controls. You can move the second row forwards, fold the third row flat, and you have max people and max storage. Now it's a little bit of a process to do that, so check out the full detailed review if you wanna see those angles. But it does give you a lot more space and it's very nice to have. And then from here, instead of closing that one individually, just push the button up top and both of them will close. You can use that one on the right to lock the vehicle too, which is nice and convenient. And then I haven't seen a way to unlock the rear door handles without using the key fob, unless it's a setting I'm missing. But for this interior, solid black leather, interior ambient lighting, Bowers and Wilkins, carbon fiber, even a ton of sunshades to control. So there's one for each passenger door in the back, and then we have the ones up top, front, and rear. So you can control that from both back seats, which is nice, plenty of storage underneath. And then let's work our way to this third row. You'll notice that the front seat will move out of the way for the second seat to move forwards. And that will give me room at five foot 10 to hop my way into the back. Now you can also fold down the third row on both sides using those controls, which is nice. And honestly, I could ride back here. It's very comfortable. Armrest, cup holder, lighting. These are even heated too with their own climate adjustments. And we have the Alcantara headliner, but plenty of visibility and very open feeling at five foot 10. I could go on a mini road trip. It is that spacious for your third row passengers. 
Now, when you put that backrest up, seat will start to move forward or move backwards. I'm just gonna hop in it while it's doing that. We have an area where you can place a tablet along with charge it to, some brushed accents, storage pockets. These are heated as expected, own climate adjustments, some auxiliary storage and cup holders. It's a nice place to be. We have the captain's chair too with the adjustable armrest, both forwards and backwards. And then you can even get that out of the way and then lock it into place wherever you would like it. So definitely another great place to be if you are not up in this driver's seat where you have memory seating adjustments, they're massaging, you can adjust the passenger seat up front, even a rear seat too, and you have the rest of those controls to go over. M6DI is an illuminating badge, and then the leather works its way to these front seats. Let's fire this up though. We have the M60, so it gives you the M steering wheel with all the BMW colors, all the brushed aluminum accents too. We have cruise control, volume tuning, and then you can even go through this gauge cluster. So currently it's showing miles per hour on that left side, and then on the right side is the tack. If I push on this, now we can go through the various content. So I'll go all the way up to the top where you have miles per hour, and then I can scroll down, go to some vehicle information. There's content that you can look at, like your assisted view. There's even augmented reality. So this is a camera facing forwards. Probably better to use this at nighttime, but either way, it gives you that forward facing visibility if you need a little bit of extra. You have the compass along with the map, even a G meter, and then your radio. Now, if I go over to layout, that will completely change the sides of it basically, or you can have more of a calm screen with miles per hour tucked away on that left side. So that way you can still go through this content in a little bit larger of a view. So it just depends on what you'd like to see. And the last one is for the head-up display where you have three different settings, directional, standard, and reduced. And then this also has the paddle shifters which are finished off in brushed aluminum. And on this left side, a little bit of storage space down below. We have the headlight adjustments, carbon fiber, brushed aluminum, entire dash is leather which is nice now i believe this is new for the 24 year model just the configuration of the screen the screen setup isn't new but i believe this is with all the information right in the middle so on the home screen you have the nav and then on this side you can swipe to go through all this information instead of going side to side like in the previous models you just have this area here now down below, there's also shortcuts to your music, all of the apps that you can go into just to configure this as needed. There's all the climate adjustments, so you can go through all of that, navigation, and then music. Now, if you've been able to tell, the climate adjustments are still fixed on both sides. Gives you access to get into your heated and ventilated seats, also the heated steering wheel, and then you can easily adjust the temperature for driver and passenger carbon fiber underneath that. There's even an illuminating badge all the way to the M logo there, which is nice to see. Two air vents in the middle, power and volume and tuning. And then with this carbon fiber lid, if I open this up, there's wireless charging, the access card, a 12 volt. You even get heated and cooled cup holders up front, which is nice to see. Now you can use this system with these controls over here. So there's the rotary dial to go through that. And then you have shortcuts for home and map along with media and phone, so you can easily get through that. There's traction control, parking sensors, the engine start stop feature, and then a few different driving modes. So there's sport mode, comfort, and eco. Sport and eco have a few different settings. Downhill assist control, auto hold and e-brake. This even has the adjustable adaptive suspension, so you can raise and lower the vehicle. And then let's put it into reverse, where this has that 360 camera system. Very easy to go through this. You have an array of views of course, being that 3D system, so you can quickly go through all of that, even pull up the forward-facing camera too, once you are in drive. So it's very nice to be able to do that. Drive is all the way back, along with sport mode, and then park is just behind that. Now in the center armrest, plenty of space for all the information, along with the glove box, and then we have the Alcantara headliner, moonroof for your front two, there's even one in the back there for your third row passengers and plenty of visibility for the size of this SUV. And from second gear, here we go. Hopefully you can hear that exhaust. Again, not crazy loud, but it has a good tone to it. Now for the driving experience for this 24X7, like I've already covered, it is so nice to drive. It's so comfortable. I love the support of these seats. You can get them in a good spot. 
We also have a lot of controls to go through, but it's not complicated. It's very easy to use the info that is available. And that's another thing that I like with these BMWs. You have what looks to be a fancy screen without all that extra fancy info that you don't necessarily want. For me, I like the look of it and I like the simplicity, but you still get some good information that you can easily go through. So it's a good blend of everything. And for 120 grand, this is what you would expect. We have all of the bells and whistles for this sporty SUV. And as far as turning radius goes, it's a big vehicle. So, you know, parking lot situations, things like that. We dipped a little bit there. It's not all that bad. It's a little bit shorter than some other full-size three rows. I think just with that space, that's behind the third row. Uh, so it is a little bit smaller, not significantly, but it feels like it has a, a smaller footprint. It's not very large from the driver's seat. So I can see the back end of it very well through all my mirrors and everything. I will say, I think maybe one other downside to this is that there's no digital camera in the rear view. A lot of vehicles are coming with that. A lot of vehicles that are even half the price of this are coming with that too. So maybe BMW can incorporate that into its mirror at some point. I think it's just a trend that's slowly trickling into different manufacturers and things like that. And I've been in sport mode the entire time. If we go into eco now, this is basically just going to modulate the throttle response a little bit more. So that way you can save a little bit on some gas possibly, but it will change the ride a little bit with that adaptive suspension, which you can raise and lower again, which is nice to see. That really makes this vehicle uh, be enjoyable to ride. And the space in it is great too. You can have this packed full of people or full of storage. And you really have a good all around blend for this performance SUV. So I think that is going to wrap it up for the 2024 BMW X7 M60i. Once again, a huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake. Check out their website. Give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And make sure you smash that subscribe button so you guys can stay tuned with our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.